Hi there fellow painters, my name is Ruben Gonzalez and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint an industrial facade in a bit of a fantasy style using these basic colours. Let's start with the grey primer. I'm going to use this bowl to hold my acrylic paint and then I'll add some water. All I want to do here is apply an undercoat to the whole surface. As you can see I've nearly finished applying the primer for this first coat of paint. Now that I've finished the undercoat the facade is looking quite good and we're ready for the next step. I've used this piece of paper here to test the various combinations I can make with the basic colours. For example, when I mix the red and the blue, I get a kind of purplish brown colour. The blue and the yellow give me this. Red and yellow together look like this. And this is all three of them combined. If I add black to those mixtures, as you can see, I get the same colours, but a little darker. Adding white makes them lighter. I can also use the black and white to create the range of greys that I'm going to need. Finally, by adding white or black to the basic colours, I can create lighter or darker shades of those same colours. So these are the basic colours. They give me browns, ochres, oranges, yellows, reds. In essence, practically the entire range of colours I'm going to need to paint this facade. So I'm going to start preparing my colours on this palette here. As you can see, I've started adding some colour to this vent here, which I've done using red, yellow and a touch of black to make this dark orange colour. But before I carry on, I'm going to go over the previous colour again to get rid of any streaks that were left behind. I've diluted my rust colour a little more for the inside of my vent for a slightly lighter shade. We'll check the result once it's dry and if necessary I can go over it again. My next colour is a mix of red, blue and yellow with a touch of white. You can keep adjusting the mix by adding a little more of the various colours until you get the result you want. I'm not working to a predefined colour palette here. I mean you can use whatever colours you want to do this. I'm going to use this colour to paint the middle section, which is the most complicated because it's the smoothest. I'm going to use this brush for most of it, and afterwards I'll go over the most complicated areas that need a smaller brush with a different one. I've mixed a couple more shades of the same colour that I'm using for this middle part and that I need to go over again. I mean when it's dry I'll need to go over them again. And with those two colours I'm going to paint this side section. There's going to be a ladder here, okay? So I'm going to paint it with a lighter shade because my plan is to use a rust colour on the ladder itself. Now I just need to wait for it to dry.
As you can see, I'm just finishing a few touch-ups with the colours I'm using at the moment, this range of bluish greys that I mixed earlier. Later on I intend to apply a second coat in a few areas. Right now I'm just going to paint a few more details in, the, in this darker colour, like this edge right here. in order to achieve a bit of variety, wear and tear etc. All I've done is use a small piece of sponge and dabbed it over the surface like this. I've used these three colours, yellow, red and black. I've mixed a range of rust colours, rusty browns. You need to start with orange, which you get from mixing red and yellow. Well, start with the yellow, then you add red until you get the shade of orange you want. And then you can add a bit of black to make it browner, or if you want, you can add a splash of red. In the end, this will help you achieve more colour variety. Let me show you how it works. I've taped around the area, I'll do the same later over here, to avoid getting any paint where I don't want it. I'm going to try it out and you'll see how it works. You need to get some paint on the sponge, dry it a little and then use a napkin or kitchen roll to finish drying it off. and then you just dab the sponge wherever you want. See? Don't press down too hard, the tweezers shouldn't touch the surface. You should just see the paint being left on the surface, but I'm not pressing hard at all. This will give you a paint chip effect on your surface, a flaky paint look. Once we start applying washes and things, you'll see how this adds more variety to the base colour and depth. Right, now I'm going to show you how to reproduce that texture there on this other part of the facade. As you can see, I've already added two strips of masking tape. This is your bog standard masking tape you can't you can find anywhere. I'm marking out this area so I don't get paint anywhere else because the sponge is a little hard to control and I don't want my paint to go over the edges. Then I grab the sponge with the tweezers, turning it to the side I want to use. Bear in mind that the sponge is like an ink pad. It has patterns. If you don't switch it up a bit, you'll keep repeating the same pattern over and over again on your model. And now for a bit of orange. Again, you want to make sure you don't have too much paint on your sponge. And that should be it. Let's take off this masking tape. And you'll see that none of the paint went over the edges around the area I was working on. We've added a new texture to the piece. I'm painting a few more details here in matte black. Later on I'll do a bit of dry brushing to highlight them. As you can see, I'm painting this sort of gutter thing here with grooves, painting it bit by bit. So things are coming along nicely. As you can see, I've already painted these vents up here, this gutter, and I've started to paint these pipes. I mixed some white and blue to paint the pipes, 
and these clamps here in dark grey. I added some black to that white blue mix to make my dark grey. To add some texture to this part here I'm going to use a bit of dry brushing. For that you'll need some kitchen roll and the colour mix you want to use. Then take some paint on your brush and dry it on the paper. With the dry brush start rubbing it over the surface and you'll see it starts taking shape. I mean the colour starts to change a little. Now I'm going to see if I can't add some effect to these vent things here. I'm going to use this grey, which I've diluted quite a bit. I'm going to dry off the brush and then apply some lighting effect to the blades. As you can see, I'm still adding colour to the vents. Now I'm adding some light to the tops of the blades. So I've added a few more details now like these lights here in white. I've started to paint these letters a bit too. These pipes have been painted and I'll add some lighting to them later. Now what I'm going to do is paint this kind of door in the middle. I want to use a shade of orange but I'm going to use the sponge. The paint will be quite diluted but I'll use the sponge to add this colour. I'm going to apply the colours and mix them straight on the surface. Later I'll apply some washes and that will be it, more or less done. I can also add a bit of shadowing now I'm doing this. Later on I can blend in these shadows using the sponge again. Right now I want to tell you about some specific products because they are very good for painting this type of model. I'm talking about these clear colour acrylic inks. They are good because they let you create certain contrasts and details you simply can't achieve with standard paints. For example, I've used clear smoke to paint the screen here and a lens over here next to the buttons for example to get that finish. I added some clear green to this green light to make it look like glass. Compare it with the red one. I'm going to add the red ink now and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a transparent ink like traditional bulb lacquer but in acrylic form. Just by adding a little, you can make it shine a lot, like it were made of glass. And that's it. Look for yourself. You can see that it shines like glass now. That's all you need to do for that. Now that I've finished the first stage of painting this facade, I can move on to the aging process. To do that, I'm going to use this product here to apply some washes and basic shadowing.
This is an enamel product that I'm going to dilute with a bit of white spirit. I'm going to wash the facade to highlight all the bumps and grooves. So I'm applying it to all the grooves now. I'll clean off any excess later with a bit of fresh white spirit. Now that I've applied the wash, I'm going to take some fresh white spirit, which I've got here in a pot, and clean some areas, making sure not to take off too much. Wipe your brush from time to time. And this lets me remove all the bits where the product has collected around the various bumps. As you can see my facade is taking shape nicely. I'm going to carry on cleaning the wash and creating some small effects. The depth provided by this product can help you create several subtle effects. Depending on how much you clean off, you can create a sense of dirt, drips and other marks on the facade. That's why I try not to clean too much in certain parts where in others I clean a little more. Basically I leave the dirt where I want it to be and remove it where I don't want it. For example, I created these streaks here with the same product. I left this part cleaner this part dirtier. You can play with these effects however you like. Before I carry on with the aging process, this piece comes with a metal ladder. These staples are included so you can create the ladder right here. The holes come pre-marked for you and all you need to do is make them a little deeper with a drill. Now I'm going to separate the staples using a cutter and set them in place on the facade. I'm using these pieces of plastic to make sure they all sit at the same height from the facade. This will help me attach them all at more or less the same depth. So all I need to do is get the staples into the corresponding holes And once they're all in, push them down and they should all be set to the same depth. Then I can remove the plastic and glue them down with a bit of cyanoacrylate ready for painting. After I got the ladder done, I applied a grey primer and what I'm doing now is painting the rungs with a mix of orange, yellow and black gives me a kind of dark brown to look like rust you know. I'm going to paint all the rungs with this. Afterwards I'll make a mix of red and yellow to get orange with which I can simulate a rusty look. You can add some paint chip effects on the rungs themselves just like I did with the vent and the door. To finish off the facade and to add a little something extra, you might want to use this product here, which simulates a rust effect and I'll mix it with the faded dark yellow oil. I'm going to use this mix and apply it in those areas where I've, where I've tried to represent rust, all over the ladder here and on this kind of hatch over here, wherever I've added rust streaks. I also added this little text here on the wall. 
The idea is to use the oil in combination with the enamel. I make a mix like this and dab it onto the parts where the metal comes into contact with the wall. All I need to do then is use the white spirit to create those streaks and give a sense of rust running down the wall. And here is the completely finished facade. I've painted the edge with black primer for a better effect. And that's it. Done. If you enjoyed that, don't forget to give us a like and follow us on all our official channels. See you next time.